Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, and since it's Halloween, I decided to do a movie review of a horror film from 1995. It's called Tales from the Hood, and it's sort of a retelling of an anthology that's sort of like in the tradition of Tales from the Crib, Creep Show, and Tales from the Dark Side, the movie. It's produced by Spike Lee's production company. 40 Acres and a Mutual Filmworks and distributed by Savoy Pictures, a studio known for films like A Bronx Tale, Shadowlands, Serial Mom, and so on. It stars Clarence Williams III from The Mod Squad, David Allen Greer from In Living Color, L Corbin Bernson from L.A. Law, Tom Wright who's been in an episode of Seinfeld and Rosaline Cash. The movie begins when a free trio of drug dealers played by Samuel Moron Jr., Joe Torrey, and DeAndre Bonds are called to a funeral parlor to collect a stash of drugs. They are greeted by a creepy and eccentric Mr. Sims played by Clarence Williams III, who proceeds to tell them four moralistic tales of terror regarding the, the deceased who lies in his parlor. The first tale concerns a man murdered by crooked police officers, Tom Wright, and the officers who begin hearing his voice beyond the grave, Anthony Griffin, to avenge his death. The second story deals with a boy named Walter Brendan Hammond, the monster who torments him, David Allen Greer, and the teacher who realizes that something is wrong. That's played by Rusty Condeff, who's also the director of this movie. And the third story deals with a former KKK supremacist who's now being running for governor played by Coburn Bernson, um, who lives in an old house with a history of racial violence and who refused to heal the warnings of a supernatural princess that occupies it. And finally, the fourth story deals with a career criminal, played by Lamont Bentley, who agrees to undergo a horrific behavioral modification program overseen by government employee scientist Rosalind Cash. The stories each have become radically scarier as Mr. Sims go on and as the drug dealers begin to lose their patience until they, f they are ultimately given what they have come for and find there is something much more evil to a funeral home than they ever realize. I gotta say, for a film like this, this has to be one of the most creepiest films I've ever seen in my entire life. And this was made back in the 90s when films like this were were very different, unlike today, where everything has to be CGI and all that stuff. It just doesn't work. Um, don't get me wrong. But this horror film that was sort of in the retelling of Tales from the Crypt was really different. And yet it was, it had so many very graphic language in this film, a lot of swearing. Um, a lot of F-bombs over over the place, plus a lot of graphic and very brutal um, violence all the way around that it just made it up for this one big horror film. Um, I gotta say that the David Alan Greer character as the a very abusive fodder has to be the most messed up uh, character I'd ever seen considering that he was a comedian and very funny on in living color it's hard to believe that David Allen Greer would take a role like this um, and that's probably why his career has been quite the same afterwards but it's very strange to see him <laughs> in a role like that where he basically beats up a very young boy along with his wife and the teacher too um, very brutal too with all this blood splitting out out of their mouths. Terrible. Also, a zombie politician, you know, is going around getting their revenge on 
on these four cops that were doing a lot of pol police brutality on him for no reason at all because you know because they're being racist and stupid you know at least they got what they deserved though they were complete idiots and other than that though it had a lot of dark uh, moments uh, has a lot of great look to it even though it was very brutal and very graphic but for a film like this it did have a message of of what it was going to be like if things like this had happened but it's sort of like a retelling of it so anyway I'll, I'll i'll take my chances on this i did enjoy this movie um, it's kind of hard to watch when you think about it but it's the kind of film that does take your time to watch if you really want to because i think it's definitely underrated in my opinion and it really is too because uh, not many people talk about it that much sadly but it sure was a cult classic back in the 90s but it didn't do so well with the box office sadly so anyway i'll give tales from the hood three stars i'm joseph a sabora and i'll see you later bye <laughs>